Hi. In this presentation, I'll talk about rigid orientation preserving transformations of R2. Uh, we're going to just assume throughout that we've got a rigid orientation preserving map A. So let A be a rigid orientation preserving transformation or map on R2. And the theorem we're going to prove is the following. It's really the third part that's maybe the most important. But one is if A of 0 is 0, so if A holds the origin fixed, then A is a rotation R theta for some theta. So the only rigid orientation preserving maps that hold the origin fixed are rotations. And it's pretty clear that rotations are rigid and orientation preserving because they just rigidly rotate. Um, and so this includes in particular linear maps because linear maps map 0 to 0. On the other hand, more generally, if A of U equals U for some point U, then A is a generalized rotation R superscript U sub theta or some theta again. And then, without assuming anything about fixed points, you have in general uh, that A, no, in general, A is either a translation T sub U or a generalized rotation R U theta for some U and some theta in the second case. So our main proof technique for this is going to be the following lemma. So I should warn you, my proofs are going to be a little hand-wavy. I'm going to depend a little more on intuition than rigor with this presentation. And they're also going to differ rather considerably from what's in the textbook. The textbook does more or less the same theorems in section 2.2.3. Uh, you're welcome to look at those as well. And the proofs are structured a bit differently. They're not inherently different in any way, but they're structured somewhat differently. I'm going to try to take a little more of an intuitive point of view here and run through the proofs a little more quickly than is done in the textbook. Um, but our main lemma is the following. We suppose that we have two points, distinct points, x not equal to y, then, and we're still always supposing that A is a rigid orientation preserving map on R2. Then A is completely determined, or I should say uniquely determined, by its values on x and y. So by the value u, which is a of x, and the value b, v, which is a of y. So if we, know, if we know that A is rigid orientation preserving, and we know its values on two points, then we know the whole mapping after that. And the proof, we'll just do a nice little picture here. So I've got two points, X and Y, in R2. And their distance D, of course, from some distance D, since they're non-zero because they're distinct points. And someplace there's U, which is A of X, and there's v, which is a of y. And of course we know that these are also distance d, because a preserves distances. Now we'd like to say that knowing these values u and v, and knowing that a is rigid orientation preserving, tells us all the rest of the values of a. So in particular, how do we prove that? Well, let's take some other point z. So here's some other point Z. And 
we, z has that's different from x and y. And z has some distance, I'll call it d2 from x, and distance d3 from y. And by rigidity, a of z has to have the same distances from u and v, respectively. So there's only two such things. You take the unit circle, not the unit circle, the circle of radius d3 around y, the circle of radius d2 around x, they intersect at only two points. There's a point about here, which I'll call w, and there's a point about here, symmetrically on the other side of the line, containing u and v. And w has the property that its distance d2 from x and distance d3, I'm sorry, its distance d2 from u and its distance d3 from v, just like z has the dis those distances from x and y. And then likewise, w prime has the same distances, d2 and d3, from u and v, respectively. So these w and w prime are the only possible values for a of z. So by, by rigidity, of a, either a of z equals w, or a of z equals w prime. But by the orientation property, orientation preserving property, we have to have the angles preserved. So we've got a counterclockwise angle here, counterclockwise angle here, we have that it follows that uh, a of z has to be equal to w. So that proves the theorem, or I'm sorry, proves the lemma. So that proves the lemma because we said that the value of a of z is uniquely determined once you know u and v are the values of a on x and y. So now we're going to use the lemma to prove parts one and two of the theorem. Part two is just a generalization of part one because you can just take u equals v. So let's just prove part two. So the proof of two. So here we've got the picture is there's some point u, and a of u is equal to u, right? So let's look at the point one unit over. So here's u plus i. So this is distance one. And of course, it lies on the unit circle centered at u, right? So we know that a of u equals u, and a of u plus i, by rigidity, lies on this, on the unit circle, around u. So it sits someplace, say, here, right? So here's u plus i. Here, this is also distance 1. Here's a of u plus i. And so we have that, write everything here. Let's call this thing v, by the way. We know that a of u equals u, and a of u plus i equals v. But also, let's consider a rotation. Let, let's, let this angle be theta, and we consider r u theta then we have r u theta of u equals u, and r u theta of u plus i equals v. So in other words, r is equal to r of u theta, r u theta is equal to a on these two points. So by the lemma, a is just equal to r u theta, because a rotation, a generalized rotation, 
is rigid and orientation preserving. And then by the lemma, because it agrees with A at two places, A is just equal to it. So that's QED after we proved 1 and 2, because 2 is a special, uh, 1 is a special case of 2. So now let's do the proof of part 3. And this will, we need to show that A is either a translation or a generalized rotation. So for this, we're going to let V equal A of 0 and W equal A of V. So the picture is something like the following. Here's 0, here's V, their distance D apart, and here's W. By rigidity, W is distance D from V, since V is distance D from 0. D is A of 0, W is A of V. Okay, and now we have several cases. So, case A is where if v equals 0, then a of 0 equals 0. So by condition 1 up here, a is r theta for some theta. And then, in other words, is a generalized rotation of the form r 0 theta. And the theorem, the conclusion of the theorem holds in that case. Otherwise, let's assume that v is not equal to 0. So in particular, d, in going forward, d will be greater than 0. So the second case is where w equals 2v. So let's draw the picture here. We're splitting into cases, I guess I should say this. We're splitting the cases based on what this angle is. So if this angle is theta, this is the, the case where theta is 0. So the angle, we've got 0 to v and v to w. We extend the line from 0 to v, and that's angle's theta. So the picture here is we've got 0, v, and 2v equal to w. Okay. And A maps 0 to V, and it maps V to 2V. Now we have that the translation T sub V of 0 equals V, and the translation T sub V of V equals W. So by the lemma again, A is equal to T sub V because a translation is rigid and orientation preserving, and both A and T sub V map 0 to V and V to 2V. So they agree on those two values. They're both rigid and orientation preserving. So A is just equal to the T sub V. So for case C, we consider the case where W equals 0. So the picture here is we've got 0, and we've got v, and w is equal to 0. So in other words, a sends 0 to v, and it sends v to w. The midpoint of this line is v over 2. Uh, this is actually the case, coming back to this picture here, where theta has, is 180 degrees. So this is i.e. Theta equals 180 degrees, or pi radians, if you wish. And now we consider the generalized rotation r v over 2 pi. In other words, we're rotating 180 degrees 
around the center of that line segment. Well, it's pretty clear if you rotate that segment 180 degrees around its midpoint, you're going to send V to 0 and 0 to V. So we have R V over 2 pi of 0 equals V and R V over 2 pi of V equals 0. So again by the lemma, A is R V over 2 pi. And that typo here, this should have been pi. So in these three cases, we've got that A is either a rotation, a translation, or a rotation on the origin in the first case. We still have one case left. So the final case, case D, is really the main case. So the final case is arbitrary uh, theta, so, so none of the earlier cases hold. So in this case, let me draw the picture bigger. We've got 0 is here, V is here, W is here, these are both length d apart from each other. 0 to v is length d, and, zero to, and v to w is length d. And if we extend this line out, here's an angle theta, and we have that um, theta is not equal to 0, and theta is not equal to 180 degrees. We'll just draw it going up, but the same proof works going down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the perpendicular lines, and we'll switch to a blue color for the perpendicular lines, so I'm going to take the midpoints of the two line segments. I'm going to take the lines perpendicular through those midpoints. The, the line segments are not parallel, so the perpendiculars are not par parallel. So this is line L1, this is line L2, and they intersect at a point U. So by rigidity of A, Um, A sends L1 to L2, because L1 is the set of points that's equidistant between 0 and V, and L2 is a set of points that are equidistant between V and W. And by orientation preserving, uh, we have that the, let me just We have that the part of the L1 going upward maps to the part of L going outward. And by rigidity again, U maps to itself. A of U equals U. So by the lemma, A is R U theta. Well, the lemma says it holds for some theta, but it's easy to see it's actually the very same theta. So that proves the third part of the theorem. Now, the whole thing seemed rather mathematical here. What was the point of this? It's saying that in graphics, we're frequently interested in moving things around in space without changing their size or shape or their orientation. And um, what this is saying, then, is for moving things around in space without changing size or shape or orientation, it's enough to consider translations and generalized rotations. And since generalized rotations can be expressed as a composition of translations and rotations, it's actually enough to take compositions of translations and rotations. And with those, we can obtain any rigid orientation preserving map in R2. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.